Hi everyone. Good morning and good evening, guys. Good morning, ma'am. Very good morning. Okay, let's start. Hi. Right, good evening, sir. Very good evening. Good morning, Hello, good sir. Evening. Good morning. Good evening. Yes. Okay, so we created uh, um, the, uh, we discussed about the branches. Okay. Guys, I gave us a few small tasks yesterday. Anyone tried? Yes. Yes. Tell me one by one. Tell me the task and uh, the solution also. Only the answer is yes. What about the solution? Come on, guys. Uh, so... What is the task and what is the solution? Come on, one by one. If it is wrong, also nothing will happen. Tell me, uh, so we know that in try today. Uh, I didn't try to be known actually. Uh, some answer I'm expecting, guys. Correct. Uh, I didn't try this one. Uh, actually, I forgot the task, what has to be done. Okay, so, fine. yeah, I was busy on my schedule. So, that no I problem. Work. You go through the video today and you try it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Good. Yeah, I, I'm expecting this answer. Something. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I tried the mm -hmm. one that uh, you said that, you know, create a file. Mm -hmm. and try to switch um, from master to the new branch and uh -huh. then uh, commit it. Uh -huh. So I switched the branch before I made the, uh, the file and it didn't go through. Uh -huh. And then I have to go back. I mean, it, it just showed me the error, uh -huh. basically. Yeah, so then I went back and then I commit the file and then I switched the um the branch okay fine good so the task is actually uh i ask you to create one or two actions in the working directory and uh, uh, switch to uh, uh move those actions to staging area as well and without committing try to switch to other branch okay so if you switch to other branch that actions will show that actions whatever the files you created that will reflect in other branch also why means you not commit so whether you are in working directory, whether you are in staging area, so the files will show in other branches until and unless you commit in any one of the branch. Okay, once you commit now, it will not show. So in any branch, you can you can commit. Okay. So that is the thing. Okay, fine. Next, uh, what is another task? Uh, I ask you to delete uh, the uh, before merging the uh, branch. Try to delete the branch. Anyone tried? Okay, so fine, guys. No problem. Uh, uh, hey, Prof. I did it. I, you know, yesterday I actually I told you that um, I was a little bit having some challenge. You know that is. Within weekend, I'm so busy. I just came home since morning. I've not been home. I think weekend that gives me room to zip through what we've been talking about. I, I, I think, to be honest with you, I, I did try this afternoon yeah, during the break. Yes, I have. You are from the different consultancy. You need to contact the Solomon. Okay. 
so you and kahir and uh, one okay so you three people please contact the solomon he will he will give you the solution for that okay okay is is there let me ask and not before you proceed we can reach you directly is there any way we can have an access to you how so do i reach you that also see uh, it is restricted here okay so you are from the different consults and consultancy so please contact solomon okay he will give you the details okay all right all right Okay, um, fine. Uh, so if any, uh, so you try remaining tasks also, guys. Okay, okay. Um, okay, now we'll continue. Uh, we done with the branching and cherry pick and not get ignore file in the last class. Now uh, we'll go with. Mensch versus rebase. Okay. So, very important interview question, but we will not use in the real time. Okay. So, Mensch versus rebase. What is this? See, here, both match and rebase, both are same guys. What is the purpose of the match? Matching the data from one branch to another branch. The same thing the rebase also will do here. For one purpose, why we need two options? Not required, no. But here, small difference is there between the match and rebase. Okay? So, that I will try to explain today. Uh, I am looking for one website here. Huh. Here you can see, rebasing and matching are both designed to integrate the changes from one branch into another branch, but in different ways. Okay. So, see, how the match is working in the same way the rebase also will work, but little difference is there. Okay. That we are going to discuss now. Here we know, right, commits. Commits means what? See, after creating the action, we are moving to the staging area and after that we are committing data. Okay. So once you commit, you will get one log or a commit ID for the characters, commit ID you get. It is generated. Okay. So that is what the commits we call. Okay. So we know about the commits. We are not talking about the commits here. And let's go to the match. Here, see, we have the two branches. They're taking example two branches here, the master branch and the future branch. Okay, master and the future. So in the master, we have some commits and in the future also we have some commits. Suppose here, see in the master branch, we have a A commit, A file, and the future branch, we have the B file. So once you match the future branch to master, it will become AB. Okay, so how to match and all we discussed yesterday. Simple command only, git match branch name, that's it. So we don't have any problem with the match also. We know. What is match also here? Coming to the rebase. Rebase also exactly it work like a match only. See here in the master you have the commits and in the future also you have the commits. But when you match the future branch with the master here, see, when you match the future branch commits with the master branch, what will happen? No, it will match successfully, it will match. After matching, it will delete the future branch commits. After matching, it will delete the future branch commits. So this is the problem with the rebase action. Normally, uh, if you restore from the recycle bin, we will clean the recycle bin, right? Like that. Okay. So, but there we will do manually. Here, automatically after matching, it will delete the uh, that future branch commits completely. So this is the this is how the rebase will work. Okay, 
this one we will not use in the real time guys but in the interviews they are asking that's why i'm explaining this concept it is completely theory part only i'm explaining here not i'm not showing any practical here okay so in real time why we will not go with the rebase means their public public will be there i mean public or uh, uh, branches and public repositories will be there see not only one person number of people will work on the branches okay so if you commit if you use the rebase you know, instead of med it is deleting after meting it is deleting the old data i mean that commits in the branch so it is strictly not recommended actually so not it is not only deleting your commits it is deleting other commits also other people commits also it is deleting so that is the problem with the rebase okay so actually we have one golden rule also here these people atlassian people they are explaining nicely so we have the golden rule here the golden rule of rebasing okay once you understand what rebasing is the most important thing is to learn is when not to do it when not to do it the golden rule of git rebasing is to never use it on public branches never use it on public branches just now i told no so should not use on the public branches number of people will work on the branch so my commits will be there other people commits will be there once you use the rebase no, it, will, it is deleting after merging this deleting okay so this is the problem with the rebase okay so in the interviews they are asking that's why i am explaining this question okay what is med versus rebase so you can explain like this okay next um, yeah anil here i am having one question when you do match hmm. is that the all the uh, commits in the feature branch will it uh, will get merged into the single commit or uh, how it is no no if you have 10 no 10 separately it will not as a single as this it will go okay yeah it, it won't be like a single commit uh, into the all changes no so in the feature branch you have 10 commits if you make the feature branch with master so 10 commits as it is it will go okay So next concept is here, merge conflict. When you will get the conflict when you're merging and how to overcome that conflict. Okay, let's see. Currently, I'm in which branch? Let me check. I'm in the uh, VM Qt's branch. So this is the data I have here. Okay. So now what I'll do here, I'm creating one file. Uh, the touch file name is apple okay something so apple file is created let me add some data then it will be very see uh, i'm adding some data inside the web apple file okay so apple file uh, from vm tube sorry otherwise otherwise i'll give not from apple file in vm tutes branch okay why i'm adding this data i'll tell you okay so normally if you get the git status untracked red color okay expected now adding i'm adding to the staging area okay so now the file is in staging area next i'm committing okay so see all these things we know guys that's why i'm going fast okay git hyph commit hyphen m apple file okay done now what i'll do the same file i'll create okay in the master branch also okay let me go git check out to the master branch so now i'm in the master branch you can check branch in the master okay so here also i'm creating a file same file i'm creating apple file Okay, so here in set mode, I will file in master branch. Uh, 
Okay, so I will file in the master branch. Now see, it is not throwing any error also. See, why means the branches are isolated branches. We discussed it, no? The branches are isolated. Same file also you can create, no problem. Okay, so staging is done. Next, git commit hyphen m. file in past to something and give it like this. Okay. Done. In the both the branches, the Apple file is created and committed also. Now I'm in the master, right? Now what I'll do, I'll match, I'll match uh, VM tools into master. How? This is the command. Hit match uh, VM tools. Okay. See, now see, here it is throwing an error. Auto matching Apple. Okay, the conflict occurred. Okay, match conflict in the Apple file. We have a conflict in the Apple file. It is telling very clearly. Automatic match failed, fix the conflict, and then commit the results. So first we need to fix this conflict. Conflict means issue, okay? So we need to fix this, then only we will commit this. So clearly it is telling we have the conflict in the Apple file. Now first open the Apple file. See, clearly it is, trolling, uh, it is showing conflict. When you will get the conflict means in the both, we have the same file. Okay, in the both the branches you have the file. Yes, you can take the same file. Already we have the old files also we can take. But here, when you matching, you will get the problem. And you're matching, you will get the problem. Same file only, but the different data also we are using here. See, that's why to differentiate, I, I added the data like this. This file is, see, Apple file from master branch. Okay, in the both the branches, same file, but different data. This Apple file from master branch. And this is from VM tools branch. So both the data is colliding here when you're matching. Okay, so like this, you will get the conflict, guys. So now how it will understand, how the Git will understand. So you are merging from VM to Apple to master Apple, you are merging. So how it will merge? Both the branches, the same file you have here. So, and the data is different. So it is showing the difference of the data here clearly. Okay, so this is how you will get the merge conflict. Now, how you will solve this? Two ways we have, guys. Suppose I assume that I am the master. Okay. Someone is handling the VM tools branch. Okay. Suppose uh, Jaskaran is handling the VM tools branch. Okay. I'm handling the master branch. Now, what I'll do, I'll contact to Jaskaran. I'll explain the scenario. This is what happened. Okay. So, just example only I'm taking. Don't uh, search for the logic here. Okay. Just I'm taking the example. Okay. So uh, now uh, I explain the uh, thing uh, to the Jaskar. Okay, this is what happened. Now the solution is here. Any one of us, either VM Toots branch owner or me, master branch, any one of us has to rename the file. Okay, either he or either me. Okay, any one of us has to rename the file and we, uh, then only we can solve this issue. Okay, that is that is one one solution. And the second way is suppose I'm okay with I'm okay with this data. Even I'm also looking for the same data in the Apple file. Then what I'll do? I'll match this data and I will continue. This is the second solution. Okay. So when you will get the conflict, the same file and you are adding the different data here. How it will match? You can add, you can create the same files in the same branch uh, in uh, different branches, but when you when you merging only, you will get the problem. This is how you will get the conflict. Okay, so any one of us has to rename it. How to rename? Either a uh, master branch Apple file or in VM tools Apple file. Any one of us has to rename. How to rename the file, guys? How to rename the file? Linux commands we already discussed. What is the command? Oh, MP. 
Git status fresh. Okay, so this is how we'll solve the match conflicts, guys. Common match conflicts is very common. Okay, so either you can rename okay the file. Otherwise, uh, if you are okay with the data, you can match the data and you can proceed. Okay, proceed means you need to save, you need to commit that. Okay, now there is no. Uh, um error like match conflict all these errors are not there so basically you're saying same same data we can merge you're saying and that depends if you want you feel it's the same data you will proceed otherwise either vm tools branch owner or you any one of uh, us uh, you will modify the i mean you will rename the file name you will rename it So okay. if he's going in a different file and see his data is completely different and your data is completely different, then you need to go for the rename only. You need to rename the file. That's it. So, okay. If the same data is pushed, then if you no, want no. to recall, if you want to recall, so which, how do we know that like which information is get pulled? That difference, differences you will get. Differences you will get uh, separately. Okay. So I'm not talking about that. Okay. So just the conflict, when you will get the conflict okay. and how to overcome. That is okay. differences uh, in, in um, uh, VM2's branch Apple file and in the master branch Apple file, what data difference is there that we have the diff, call, diff command. That you will get later. Okay, I'm not discussing about that. Here. Also, okay. how you will get the differences, differences between the branches, differences between the files, you will get in the diff concept. Okay. Next. Next concept is um, snapshot. Snapshot concept. This is very important concept. Snapshot. What is snapshot here? Okay, so here I'm taking uh, two folders or two drives I'll take. Normally in Windows, if you will get the drives, no? D drive, C drive, E drive. Okay, so you can take that. Otherwise, two folders also you can take. Okay, so suppose I'm taking here D drive and uh, have the e drive here okay e t d drive and e drive so in the d drive i created a, a file with the name app okay so the same see the app file i created here and inside this now this app file i am syncing with the d drive also okay so instead of drives, in your case, you can take two folders, two different folders. Okay. So D folder or E folder like that also you can take this. Okay. So in the D drive, you have the Apple file, sorry, app file. Okay. 
Now you for the D drive also you need to sync that. So what we will do syncing means now not normally what we will do we will copy the file from D drive. How you will copy normally? Uh, control uh, uh, yes like this we will copy right? Control C Control S like the shortcuts we have. So we will copy the file and we will paste in the E drive. Okay, so I'm pasting in the E drive. So in the both the drives, it is equal. Okay, in the D drive, you have the Apple uh, app file and the E drive also you have the app file. So tomorrow, uh, I added one line. Line one I added in the app file. Okay, so now again, I need to sync. How I'll copy the file app file I'll copy in the data and I'll paste here again right while you're copying this it will read not only previously empty file now it will read the line one also it will read the line one and now it will paste here the line one it will paste like this okay and again tomorrow I added line two here line two now once I copy this file by giving the control C like this okay once I copy automatically, so it will read the line one again and line two. See, line one, it is already there. No, why it is reading again? Yes, it will read. Okay, it, it is reading the line one and line two. Both it will read now. But actually, only line two is required, actually. But it is reading the line one also here. And line one is not required. If you use in, in, in our real world, if you use when you're copying uh, the files from uh, your computer through pen drive. Okay, or external hard disks. Okay, so in the same way only it will go. Okay, when you are copying the file, okay, it will read all the lines, all the data in the file. Okay, so like this, it is taking, it is reading again line one. Okay, fine. Now line one and line two it is reading and it is pasting here. Line two again, it pasted here. Again, I added line three. Okay, so now again, once I copy this file by giving the control C, again it will read line one, line two, line three. Actually, this is the new line. Okay, so only this line it can read, but it will not go in that way. It is reading again line two, line one, and again line three. So, what will happen if you go like this? The processing time will increase. Okay, the processing time will increase, guys. If you see sometimes from your laptops, you will get some different different sounds also. If the load is uh, heavy, okay, if the processing is heavy, it gives some different different sounds, right? So because of this sound, not only these may various reasons also there, okay, the load mainly, okay. So if it is one or two lines, means no problem, guys. Suppose assume that we have thousand lines here in the app file in D drive. Now you added 1001, one extra line you added. Okay, so now once you copy this app file, you no, know, all the thousand lines it will read again. Not required, no. Only that 1001 line only you want to read. Only that one is the difference actually. But it is reading all the thousand lines it is reading. So this is the problem actually. Okay, so, but the git is not going in this way. How the how the git will read? It will take only this difference, guys. It will take only this difference and it will go. Let me show you. Now, instead of this, what I'll do is here I'll give a working directory and here I'll give staging area. Staging. In the git, the saving process begins from the staging area only. No? In the working directory, we cannot save. Saving process will begin from Staging area only. Of course, it is saving partially, but it starts from staging area only. Permanently, if you want to say, save now in the git, it will, it will, uh, we need to commit in the committing area. Then only it will save permanently in the git. Okay. So uh, I'm not talking about the committing area. Leave it. Uh, only working and staging. Here, now in the working directory and in the staging area, app file and with two lines in the app file is equal and same. Now you added a line three here. Now, once you add the line three, 
if you're giving the command like this, git add app file name like this, what will happen? No, internally, internally, it will not read. The staging area will understand, guys, automatically. It will understand what lines I'm having inside the app file and what line is uh, different, what data is different. So only line three is different. So the staging area will understand automatically. Now what the staging area will do? It will read only the line three. Read means it will take one snap. Snap means what? Not slap. Okay. Snap. Nap is different. Slap is different. Uh, nap is different. Okay. See, slap, uh, snap is different. Don't get confused. Slap, nap, snap. Okay. Snap is nothing but one, one pick. Uh, normally we use, no? Uh, take one snap photo. Okay. So the same meaning over here. So it will take one snap. Okay. Of this line three. Okay. In the form of image only it will take and it will store here in the staging area. Okay. Only the difference it is taking the snapshot. Okay. Snapshot and it is storing in the staging area. It is not reading the line one and line two because it is there already. It will understand. Same again, line four, if you add same. Okay. So this is what the snapshot guys. It stores snapshot. It stores difference between the files in the form of a snapshot. The data which is difference between the files, okay, that data, it will store in the form of a snapshot. Okay, so normally suppose if you give like this, suppose if you open the file like this cat app, okay, so you will get all the lines. Uh, don't think only line three it will give, no. It will read through all the lines, line one, line two, line three, all the lines it will give. Okay, so this is how the git will save the actions, guys. Okay, it will not read again and again the same data regularly. Okay. So this is completely theory part. No one can show you practical. Why means? It is an internal concept. Whenever you give this command git add app, internally the staging area will read like this. It is not possible to show. Okay. Clear? Any doubts in this? No. Okay. In real time, mm -hmm. can you explain like oh, how come this snapshot works basically? Uh, because when you say git add, so we know that what files we are adding. So what is the use of snapshot here? We will not be adding all the lines, right? The one we updated, the one we changed, those lines only will get added. Those lines only it will take. Simple. You create a same, same example only. See, whatever the functionality I'm explaining here in the classroom, not only me, any faculty, whatever you're explaining, the same thing only will be there in the real time. Here in the classroom, the snapshot behavior will not different. And in the real time, the snapshot behavior will not different. The same behavior only. Okay, the same data. You created a file, app file, and you have the data. Okay, when you're moving from working directory to staging area for partially saving, okay, it will not read the same lines and again and again. Okay, instead of that, it will take only the difference. What difference is there? That only it will read. I mean, it will read in the form of one image and it will store. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Same, same, nothing difference. Yeah. <laughs> if you have one file, thousand files, if you have one line, thousand lines, okay, uh, for all the files, it is same. And for all the lines inside a single file also, it is, okay. So, so there is no uh, change actually. When this function will work means whenever you give the command, git add app, okay, this command to move to the staging area only, no? So here this com uh, this concept will come actually. It's a completely internal, internal process I'm explaining here. Okay, we know, yeah. 
Okay, next one. Uh, is it like uh, anything in the snapshot uh, associated with the, any revision ID or commit ID? Uh, internally, uh, temporary IDs will be there. Actually, whatever the IDs we are seeing here, actually, uh, see, uh, we log here, this, this IDs we call it as a permanent IDs. Okay, uh, another word is external IDs we call actually. Temporary IDs also will be will stored in the form of a temporary IDs. Yes, but that concept also you will get what is temporary ID, external ID, that also you will get next. It will okay. consider as an IDs only here. Here, whatever the IDs you are seeing, this is a permanent IDs. Okay, so in the staging area also you will get the IDs. Those, are, those IDs we call it as a temporary IDs. Okay, temporary IDs. But temporary IDs, we don't, uh, we usually don't you get those. See, you cannot see that. Yeah. That concept you will get. Okay. Don't go for the temporary IDs now. The concept will uh, deviate. Okay. You yeah, can see in everything in the gate now, if, if, if uh, in the working directory, you will not get any IDs, nothing. Okay. So if Git want to start saving the actions, it will start from the staging area. So it needs some IDs to save. So it will go with the IDs. In the staging area, you will get the temporary IDs that you cannot see internally. That's internally will be there. And in the committing area, final commit ID, final commit ID, permanent commit ID, you will get that you can see in the, uh, you give the command git log. Okay. Next. Next concept is a stash concept. Stash. This one is a snapshot. Now the next concept is stash. S T A S H. What is stash? Here, uh, let me explain first theoretically. Okay, after that we'll go practical. Okay, A simple concept is also. Um, suppose uh, uh, my target is thousand lines, guys. I want to write thousand lines of code. Uh, let's take example data. Okay, just example only. Okay, so my target is I want to write thousand lines of data in one file. Okay. So after writing the thousand lines, I need to commit one commit ID. It will generate. Okay. So that uh, that commit ID is I'll give to the QA and all. Okay. That we will see later. Uh, so this is my target actually. So I started writing the data. So hundred lines I wrote in a file. So after writing the hundred lines, my manager is calling me, and he assigned some other work. Okay. Now what you will do? You will leave this. You, you will leave this uh, work. Uh, you will ignore this. Okay. I mean, so hundred lines you wrote no. So you leave this file. Leave this file means what here? You will. You cannot leave the system directly. And you will not simply. You will leave the leave your file. You will save right. You will save and you will go to your manager task right. So if you save that hundred lines in the git, what will happen? One commit ID it will generate. Okay. One commit ID it will generate. Okay. You, you are saving the data and you are going to your manager room and he is assigning some task. Okay. After finishing your manager task, again you will come and again you will start from 100, 101, 102, like this. Okay. So now just assume that you wrote 200 lines. Okay. 200 lines. And now your friend is calling. Now it's lunch time. Your friend is your colleague is calling in the office uh, for lunch. Okay, so you will not leave the system like that, right? If you leave the system like that, no. If something has happened to your system, if someone did something, uh, so the data will lost. So that that is not recommended strictly. So then obviously, what you will do? You will save the file, right? That is the recommended and best way. No, you'll save the file again. Saving means what in the git? Again, one commit ID will generate, right? Again, you are generating one more commit ID. So like this, 
for every 100 lines, you are getting an interruption. See, here I am taking for every 100 lines, guys, just for example. Not only exactly, uh, not uh, interrupt, you see, not, uh, not for every 100 lines. You will get for every two lines also. That depends. Okay. So, fine. Uh, for every 100 lines, you are getting the interruption like this and you are committing the fine. So, like this, total 100,000 lines, right? So, 1,000 lines, for 1,000 lines, you are getting 10 times. 10 times you are committing. So, how many committed is you will get? 10 committed is you are getting, you will, you are getting here. See, actually, instead of one committed, unnecessarily, you are generating 9 committed is extra. This is not recommended in the real time. You can finish that work in uh, with, with a single committed. Unnecessarily, you are generating thousand, uh, 10 committed is. So, this is not recommended. Guys. Then, what to do? So, if you if you are not if you not save the file, the data will lost. That is danger. If you leave the system like that, if something has happened to your system again. The data will lost. That is also danger. Then, what you will do? That's why you are saving. If you are saving, it is generating the committed. Then what is the solution for this? Stash is the solution. Okay. So you need to, within one committed only, you need to finish the work. How? So after writing the 100 lines in the file, okay, suppose if you want to go to your manager task, you can apply a stash command. Once you apply the stash command, what the stash will do, no? It will not commit, but it will save your data. It will take the backup. It will store in a buffer memory. It will take a back backup of your data. Okay. And you can go to your manager task and you can do it. And again, you can come back to your work and you can restore the data and you can start. You can continue. No need to commit. If you commit only now, you are getting the commit ID. So here you are not committing, you are just applying the stash. Whenever you want to go, whenever you want to leave the leave your system, you are stashing it. You are applying a stash command. It will take the backup and will keep. Okay. So this is what the stash concept is. Now you will get a doubt here. Why can't we generate uh, uh, 10 committed is? Why? Why it is not recommended? Why only one committed? Why not 10? For every line also, I will commit. So 1000 lines, 1000 committed is also I can create now. You know why you are telling uh, you should not create 1000 committed is or 10 committed is? Why means? See, the task is 1000 lines, guys. You need to finish the 1000 lines with a single committed you only. Why means? See, you need to give that data to the testers, other departments, you need to give that. For the testers, you need to give that. Committed means inside the committed one file will be there. Inside the file, the data code will be there. So you need to give to the testers. They will test. If you are so if you're giving the proper information to the testers, how they will test? You need, to, you need to submit entire thousand lines to the testers. In single committed ID, you need to submit. But you are cutting into small, small pieces. How they will test? One line, you know, uh, thousand committed is you are giving. How they will test? They will not test. They, they, are, they are not able to test properly. So that is the reason. Okay, it's not recommended to generate unnecessary commit ideas. Whenever it is required, then only we will go. So the, for this, the solution is stash only. Okay, now we will see practical. See, we have your branches ahead of origin master. All commits are pending. Let me push all these things. Just and we can get push. See, push it all those to the central dot gate. Okay. Now what I'll do is. Um, Uh, 
uh, one second. So I'll take this file, x1 file I'm taking. Any file you can take, okay? So x1 file I'm taking. Already it is there. X1 file is there already. Now what I'll do is, same example only I'll take here, okay? So insert mode. Just I'm adding like uh, line 1, line 2. Like this, I'm just I'm adding. Just assume that 100 lines. So I'm done with the 100 lines. Now what I'll do? Now I'm not saving this. See, saving means... Here in the VA editor, I'm giving WQ, save and Q. This is completely different, guys. This is a line X. In the line X, I'm saving this. Okay. But saving in the Git is what? You need to move the file to the staging area and you need to commit. Then only it will save permanently in the Git local repositories. That is different. Saving in the Git is different, guys. Completely different. Okay. Don't get confused. Here also, I'm saving in the VA editor. Okay. This is different and that is different, guys. See, here just, we are in the just current repository. Here in the working directory, we opened the VA editor. That's it. I opened X1 file in VA editor and I added few lines of data. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now, 100 lines I wrote in the uh, X1 file. Now, my manager is calling. Okay. So, I cannot leave the system like this and I cannot commit also. If I commit, it will generate a commentary, but I don't want that. Because my target is not finished. I want to develop 1000 lines, only 100 lines only I develop. So my target is not finished. So I'm not committing. Okay. So what I'll do here, I'll apply git stash, S-T-A-S-H, git stash. And you can give the command here, save, I mean not command, this one, uh, the message. Stash messages also. How we have the commit messages? When you are committing, we are giving the commit messages, right? By giving the hyphen M attribute. Same way, stash messages also. It's recommended to give the stash messages here. Why means? For what purpose you are stashing? That also we need to know. If you not give also, it will work. No problem. Okay. But it's a recommended. Save and the message. The message is here. Um, uh, what is the message? Uh, I'll just tell you like this. Manager call. Okay, I'm giving like this related. Okay. See, saved working directory and index state on master branch. Okay, and the message is showing manager call. Now I apply the stash on X1 file. Now if you go and see the X1 file, the data is not there. That 100, 100 lines are not there. Whenever you apply a stash command on the file, what it will do now? First, see, two things it will do. First one is, it will took the backup and will store in a buffer memory, a temporary memory or buffer memory, anything. And the second point is, it will remove the data. After taking the backup, it will remove the data from the file. See, it removed. That's why the data is not shown. Okay. Fine. So we applied that stash. Okay. So I went to the manager room and he gave some work and I uh, I did that. Okay. Now again, I'm back to my work. Now I want to start my work. Okay. But if you go and see in the X1 file, there is no date. So now, now see, we have already backup. No. So now we need to restore that backup. Restore means restore. Okay. So first we will see whether the backup is there or not. How to see the list uh, backup? Here we have the command. Uh, command git stash list. If you give the git stash list, no, it will show you the backups here. See, it is storing here in the index with starting with zero stash at the rate zero. Okay, and on branch master branch. Okay, we are in the master only, and the message manager call. So the backup is there. Now I want to restore this. I want to restore this. How? Git stash apply. Git stash apply stash at the rate lower braces zero. Here the index starts with zero. Okay. So here stash at the rate zero. This is the backup. Okay. Now, once you hit enter, see, now it is showing the X1 file and it's modified and red color also it is showing. 
means our our data is see uh, we restored successfully our data is back now you can go and cross check again go and open x1 file see our data is back now i want to continue my work okay so shift g these are all shortcuts guys okay shift g is a v edit shortcut so now i'm continuing here again line 101 okay so like this i'm continuing again up to line 200 i wrote okay now my friend is my colleague is calling in my office uh, for the lunch break now again now again i cannot leave the system like this and i cannot commit then what i'll do again i'll apply the stash okay the command is get stash okay and the message is save okay uh, uh, what is the message lunch break okay here i'm giving like this guys don't give like this okay so lunch break now see again it took the backup now if you want you can go and check again after taking the backup what it will do it will remove the data also okay so your lunch break is done now Again, now you need to continue with the 201 line. Okay. So you can see the list of uh, backups here. The uh, stash list. See, two backups you have here. Previously, it is a manager part. Now it, it is old one. Now the latest one is lunch break. For the latest one, the index, it is pointing zero now. Previously, the zero is pointing to the manager call. Now it is pointing to the lunch break. Okay, the latest one will be on the top, guys. Like how we have the logs. The log in the if you give the git log command, no, you will get the logs, right? The latest log will be on the top, right? In the same way here. The latest stash, uh, the backups will be on the top. Okay. So now I want to restore. Suppose if you restore manager call, no, only 100 lines you will get. If you restore the lunch break, no, you'll get the 200 lines. That is depends. It's your wish. Okay. Now I want to restore. How to restore? Git stash, apply stash at the red zero. If you want only manager call, stash at the red one. Okay. Like this, you will get. Okay. Now, you know the command, right? Git stash, apply stash at the red zero means it will restore. But I'll do in a different way. Git stash, pop also you can use pop. What is this pop now? It will restore the latest one. And after restoring, it will delete the backup also. If, if, you, if you want like this, go for the pop. Otherwise, use stash apply. Okay. If you give the pop command like this, it will restore the latest one. After restoring the latest one, it will delete this backup also from you. Like how we will uh, restore the file from uh, uh, recycle bin after that we will clean the recycle bin no? like that here it will do automatically okay i'll do this see git stash pop i gave so it's showing modified x1 file now go and check vi x1 file see the 200 lines of data is back and now go and check git stash list see that uh, lunch break is not there Pop will do the two things. Okay, it will after restoring, it will delete the latest one. Suppose in real time you have a number of okay, number of thousands of stashes will be there backup. Suppose particularly you want to uh, pop, particularly if you want to pop, you can give like this pop stash at the rate you can specify. Suppose you want to uh, pop only 100, 100 uh, stash you want to pop. Okay, you can you can do the number like this. If you are not specifying, it will take, it will pop the latest. It will pop the latest. Pop means it will pop, how the pop will work here. It will restore and it will delete. Two things it will do. So if you pop like 100 uh, stash one, then it will delete that uh, stash, 100 line. Hmm. On... 100 uh, uh, stash backup is then that only it will delete. First it will restore. Yeah. And after that, see here also same. No, now see we didn't specify. 
no 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 yeah i'm saying uh, it's better to apply uh, uh, use apply option right it's your if you don't option. want to be, yeah your depends depends upon your uh, task sometimes see, after restoring if you want to delete no you go for the pop if you don't want normally you go for git stash apply command only right? okay otherwise uh, this one git uh, git stash suppose if you want to clear all the backups all the backups if you want to clear you can give the command clean uh, not clean clear c l e r clear c l e git stash clear what it will do no uh, if you check the list it will clear all the backups if you give git stash clear suppose you don't want to clear all you want to uh, just you want to clear only the latest then you can give the command git stash drop if you give clear no it will clear all the backups first. if you want to clear only the latest one just give drop only the latest one it will drop drop it's clear meaning is same suppose particularly if you want to drop specify it specify particular if you want to drop okay if you are not specifying latest one only will. otherwise if you want to clear completely just give the command clear c l e r normally in the real time they will keep they will not clear all the things they will keep everything um, after releasing they will clear sometimes okay not uh, before okay mostly they will keep actually for us nothing is there okay no stash entries found it is right okay now so if you see the uh it's stash s t a s h oh it's not stash again it's stash now git status see if you see the git status save it to working directory come on stickly i gave this stash list the one more you got here Uh, now, so next, what we will do uh, next after, so assume that you completed 1000 lines, okay, but we didn't finish this exam. Assume that you finished the 1000 lines. Now you can add to the staging area and next you, you can commit git commit hyphen m, okay, stash is finished. So like this, now see, you will get only one commit ID, right? Only one commit ID. Okay, so here the main purpose of the stash is you should not generate unnecessary commit IDs. We are controlling with the stash concept here. Okay, it is not recommended to generate unnecessary commit IDs. Okay. We see in the material. Here I gave the stash concept. Here you have the types of files, guys. Types of files means here what file I stashed here? X1 is a tracked file. We have the file types in the git. What are the file types in the git? Tracked file, untracked file, ignored file. Three types of files. In the in the interviews you will get, guys. Okay. Three types of files you will have in the git. Tracked file, untracked file, and ignored file. Tracked file means what? Tell me. What is a tracked file, guys? Which are committed to the central repository. Not central. Remote repository. Which are committed, that's it, not central. That is C. Jaskaran is a local repository. Here, Jaskaran is non bare here. Here we are working and we are saving here only. Okay, this is a local mission. Jaskaran is a local mission here. We are, end of the day, we are pushing to the central. That is different case. I'm not talking about that. Okay, you are working yeah. in your computer, in your local computer every day, and one day you will submit, right? 
So end of the day, you will push everything to remotely. I'm not talking about the, here the central door gate. Leave about the central door gate. Okay. I'm talking about the Jaskaran only. Okay. Here we are working in the Jaskaran and we are saving here inside the Jaskaran only. Okay. What is a tracked file here? What is tracked? Tracked file means what? The file which is in staging area and committing area. If you have the file in staging and committing area, then it's a tracked file. Tracked means what, guys? If the git want to track, no. Uh, uh, the file should be in staging area and committing area. Then only it knows, right? Then only it will track. Okay. So this, so all these files are tracked files only. All this information is there in the in the committing area, right? In the Git committing area we have all this, right? We committed all already. We committed all these files. All these files are tracked files. Untracked means when you will get untracked, tell me. Working directory. Sorry. Working directory. Working directory is untracked. When you create a new action, right? When you create a new, uh, you suppose if you go and modify, sorry, not modify. When you create a new file, then that uh, that is an untracked file, right? That that file information is not there in the staging area. And that file information is not there in the committing area. So then that file is an untracked file. There only will get no a message will get right untracked and red color will get. That is an untracked file. The file information which is not there in the staging and committing area, that file we call it as an untracked. Because Git is not able to track that file information. No, that's why Git only throwing it is an untracked. I don't know about that. Okay, it is telling, it is telling, I don't know about that file. Because that file is not there in the staging and committing area, no, that's why. Okay, that is an untracked. What is ignored files? Tell me at least this. What is ignored files? This ignored files. So ignored files means, see, if you remember in the dot, we discussed yesterday's class on right? dot git ignore file we created. No? In the dot git ignore file, uh, let me show you. Here we gave the three conditions, right? If any of the any of the files, one file or ten files, if any files matching with these conditions, those files comes under ignored files. Simple. Suppose if I go and create a file with the name Vinod, no? Vinod is matching here under with this condition, right? So I gave the condition here, no? So Vinod file is matching here. So Vinod file is ignored file. Suppose if I go and create a file with the name development, see the condition is matching, no? DEV, development, DEV is the starting, right? So if I go and create a file with the name development, that file comes under the ignored files because the condition is matching. Okay, so these files are ignored files. Okay, suppose the tracked file, you can give directly stash command only. Let me show you once. Here I give all these things in the material. Take that. Which stages ignored view branching stash. Here you can see the stash. Okay. So here I wrote see, uh, file types in the Git repositories. Okay, tracked file means a file which has been already in staging and committing area. Untracked means a file which has not been already staged and committed. Okay, not has been. Okay, and see if it is a tracked file. No, here the X one file also the X one file we used right. X one file we used here. X one file is a tracked file. So when you are using the tracked file, no, 
So you, you can give the command like this, git stash is enough. Git stash is the main command. And after that, save message, save message. Suppose if you're going for the untracked file, for, okay, you want to apply a stash command on untracked file, then you need to give extra hyphen u attribute, u for untracked. Okay. Untracked, un untracked file. Okay. So, so this one. If you want to apply a stash command on a untracked file, so you can give, you have to give extra hyphen u. That's it. Remaining all the same. If it is ignored file, okay, if it is ignored file, you need to give hyphen a extra. That is the difference. Remaining same one. Okay. Can you again explain why ignore about ignore file? For that, you need to go for dot git ignore file concept. There I explain now what is the purpose of dot git ignore file? What is the use, guys? Dot git ignore file, what is the purpose of it? To filter. To filter only, we are giving the conditions inside the dot git ignore file. Okay. Those though with that conditions, if you create any files, no. So those files it will not allow to the staging area actually. Right. So you forgot the dot git ignore file. So now no, no, I understood. Uh, then what is the purpose? Like, why do we have this ignore file? Uh, hmm. or a... Why, why we need this ignored files means that's what I'm asking. What is the purpose of dot grid ignore file? Interlinked concepts are interlinked. <laughs> See, this concept is stash concept. If you want to apply a stash on a tracked file, give the command git stash and save message. Okay. Correct. It is an untracked file. Suppose you created a new file. Okay. The file with touch Muhammad you created. Okay. That file is Muhammad file is an untracked one. But that file also, if you want to apply the stash command, then normally if you give only git stash command, it will not work. That is an untracked file. No. You need to give hyphen u extra. Concept is same. Yeah, I understood that. The only thing is, what is the purpose of ignored file? Uh, just um, uh, go through that ignored file concept. Yesterday we discussed that. Yeah, we have a dot git ignore uh, folder or a file we create where we don't uh, we add our uh, basically I would say lines where which we don't want to uh, repeatedly add the lines use. files files. Hmm. Repeatedly, we don't want to use those, right? Not uh, repeatedly. You don't want to allow the files, unnecessary files. Suppose you have 100 files, okay? If you give normally git add dot, the meaning of dot is what all the files it will add to the staging area. I Sorry. don't want like that. Okay? In that, I want only one file. If I, if I use a dot, no, all 99 extra files also I'm getting. So due to this, the processing time will increase and the storage also will increase. So that's why I'm keeping a condition in the dot git ignore file. I don't want to allow a files with so and so name. So, okay. it, it, so it, in this way, uh, suppose you are working in a directory, can't we select the lines and uh, stash that one or no, uh, what? File. No, only file. Only, only file. Okay. How we will uh, stash the lines? Impossible. File only. Correct in Linux, you can't. Okay. Mm, yeah. So the same concept only. If it is a tracked file, you can use git stash untracked hyphen u. If it is ignored file, so you need to use, gotcha. use extra hyphen a. That's it. The same concept only. Yeah. Okay. How you know that it's ignored file when you're trying to add to the staging area, it will throw an error. Okay. Yeah. There you can identify it's an ignore file. Then you can apply hyphen a if you want to stash. Otherwise, not required. Okay. <laughs> So sometimes this save command will not work. If it is not working, you can use hyphen M guys. Okay, save if it is not working. I think they're deprecated. I don't know exactly. Uh, if the save command is not working, no? 
um, when you're going with hyphen u and hyphen e, you can use hyphen m. Hyphen m is also okay. Fine. Hyphen m and a message you can give. How we are giving the commit messages? Hyphen m message like that also you can. Give. So uh, this is what the stash concept is. Guys, any doubts? Okay. So that's all for today. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Bye.